Hi, I'm Lottie and I'm an artist from the northeast of England in the United Kingdom. Um, I am an artist that works mostly with cardboard and I make great big sculptures and really small ones. You can see some in the background here. So I've got this enormous mallet, camera, um, a small trophy, up here is a bear. And all these plants as well are all made from cardboard. Um, but today I'm here with Little Inventors um, to teach you some s prototyping skills. So some skills of how to use the material in order that you can bring your invention ideas to life. Um, I've heard that you're doing some work surrounding the Artemis missions, which are sending humans back to the moon for the first time in decades, which is super exciting. Um, so I thought I would show you how I would go about making an astronaut's helmet. So... This is what I am going to teach you through making today. So you're all going to end with your own one. You can see online I've put some um, little logos of the Earth and the Moon on the side, but maybe you could design your own mission badge. Um, and on mine I've added an aerial here. Um, what I'm going to be doing is teaching you a few things right once we've got this made, right at the end, in order to add features of your own. So if you have an idea of different features that you want your helmet to have, um, and then hopefully by the end everyone will end up with their own personalised helmet. So I'm going to turn the camera around now so you can see my desk and we'll get making. Okay, to start with for the materials, um, you're going to need some cereal box type of cardboard um, like this. So that's that kind of thin stuff with the shiny on one side. Um, a few pieces of kind of corrugated cardboard. So it can be see thin like that or a thicker one. Um, so that's kind of uh, things that get delivered in the mail, cardboard boxes. Um, I've also got some ones with bits of colour on, which might be nice to decorate with. Um, and some little scraps of paper might be useful later on as well. Um, for tools, ruler, pair of scissors, a couple of pencils, um, hole punch. Um, if you don't have one, I'll show you an alternative method, but having one is easier. Um, a couple of these, which are split pins. Again, I'm going to show you um, how to make the helmet if you don't have these as well, um, which is still quite easy. And we've got pegs, and they're in case you're using PVA glue. Um, so glue like this takes a little bit of time to dry, and these can be useful so that it just holds them for you, so you don't have to do it yourself. Um, and some kind of tape, so I've got a couple of different types of tape here. So I've got quite a big cereal box here. Um, you might be able to use a smaller one, but my head is a little bit bigger than yours, I imagine. Um, so what you what we're going to be wanting to do is cut some um, long strips, which are three centimetres wide. We're going to need nine of them. So one of the things um, that you can do, I'm going to cut my strips down this way. Um, and then we're going to make sure that they're the right length once we've cut them out. Um, so to start with, so that you get a nice straight edge, I would cut off this segment here. So I'm going to do a line. You can kind of push your ruler up against it and that helps you get it nice and straight. And the reason I'm doing a line is just so that you've got a pencil line to measure. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting our ruler right up against it like this and then making marks. So we want all of the strips to be three centimeters wide. So we'll be putting a little mark like this. You can see at three, and then you need to use your timetable and go up. So six, nine. Now, once you've got the marks on this side, you just put your ruler to the other end of your box. Start with the zero up here on the same line. And you just do the same. And the reason I'm doing these little marks is it just makes it easier to get some nice parallel lines. So once you've got them, you can use your ruler to match up against them like that. Um, my ruler is a little bit short of, oh, a little, almost too short for this box. Um, but I think you should find that your ruler is a 30 centimetre will be fine um, for you. So we just join these up. When you join these up if you line your ruler up along this pencil line you can continue it right to the edge of the box 
So although you don't have a mark here, if your ruler is touching the line here and here, you know that that's going to continue straight. Of course, if you've got a longer ruler, you can also do that. OK, so that is all my pencil lines drawn. You can see I've added one more up here because you're going to need nine strips in total. Um, and we're going to cut them out now. Just another little trick, though. You can see these are three centimetres apart. Now, my ruler is actually, if you look, exactly three centimetres apart. So if you were to have a ruler that's also the right distance for what you're measuring, one of the things that could make it a bit quicker is if you line up the side of your ruler with one of your lines that you've already done, you can just run down like that and save yourself a little bit of time from doing the markings. But that does depend on how big your ruler is. Um, so now we've got these, we're going to be using a pair of scissors and just carefully cut along all of these strips. You can take your time doing this. And once we've got them all cut out, we'll get them right down to the right length. So you can see because I'm doing this quickly, I'm cutting out some bits and it's not quite on the line. Don't worry too much if that happens. It won't cause too much of a problem. As a little tip, sometimes when you're cutting something that's very long like this, um, I've got quite big scissors, but you might be working with smaller ones. When you get your hand in, and you get a certain about in, these bits start getting in the way of your hand. There's nothing wrong with just um, holding this bit up. You can kind of uh, hold it up like this with one hand as you're cutting. And it just kind of keeps it out of the way of your scissors. Um, it might help make it a bit easier because you've got a lot of them to cut out. Okay, so we need to have nine. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So these are extras, I'll put them onto one side. So now we've got all of them. If you put one to one side, and we're going to be using that later. So you've got eight that we're going to be working with. Now we need to work out how long they're going to be. Um, and this depends on how big your head is, basically. So you want this one end like that to be over your ear so say your ear is here and you want that to be about halfway down a little bit further than halfway down your ear and then over the top of your head so it's actually useful to um, measure it on your head um, so you can see with this one that i've made earlier um, these two circular bits sit over your ears um, and you want this to be sitting nicely over your head if you make them um, too long the shape will kind of look more like this. So when it um, when you put it on, the um, pieces that should be over your ears are actually going to be floating out a little bit. If you hold one of these on your head and get someone to help you measure it like that, so you want to hold it, you want your ears to be, say, here and here. So if it's a little bit too long, these ones are a bit too long. So for me, I've measured it and I need to take about that amount off. So I'm going to do it on one. And then you can just use this one to measure up all the other ones. The way it's fallen on my box is actually, you see where this crease is in the actual box? So that's very lucky, but that won't necessarily happen for you. But once you've got that, you want to cut um, all eight of them. So keep that one aside that we put aside before, but cut all of these eight ones so that they're the right length. So once we've got all our pieces like this, we're going to be using the hole punch. Now, we're just going to be using one hole of the hole punch. So you want to be putting it in in the middle. So can you see a piece of cardboard? So you want the hole to be in the middle. About there. Don't worry if it's a tiny little bit off, but you want to be doing this. So push it. if you push it all the way in till, till it stops, that way you'll know that the hole's about in the same, the, about the same distance from the end on each one. And you need to do this at the other end as well. Now, if you don't have a hole punch, you can actually do this with a pencil. 
Um, it's just a little bit tougher to get through. So this shiny surface here makes it a little bit harder. And we're also pushing it through on quite a narrow space. Um, so this is a harder way, but if you really don't have a hole punch, you can do it. So you want them to be about the same distance down on all of them. So what I'd suggest would be to measure one and a half, about one and a half in. Now what you want to do with the pencil is you're going to be keeping your fingers on either side. Do you see where that pencil is? You can kind of see it showing through. So you don't want to push the pencil through and hurt your hand. Um, we can see how it's starting to bend. So you need to put your fingers on either side and then slowly wiggle it. See, it might take a bit of time, but you'll get a little hole like this. You don't have to push the pencil all the way through. Just that is enough. But you can see how the cardboard tears. And this tearing might cause problems later when you're putting them all together. So if you can get your hands on a hole punch, it is a lot, um, it's a more safe option. Um, and it's less likely to cause problems later on. So I'm going to get the rest of these done. And one more tip I've just thought of, actually, is if you have, I'm going to use this scrap piece to show you. So we've got that one and a half centimetres down and we want it to be about in the middle. And you can measure the middle this way as well, if you want to be super accurate. So that'll be there. If you've got an old rubber um, or eraser, I think you might call them erasers over there, but we call them rubbers because you rub it out. <laughs> Um, so if you put the card on top like that and use a sharp pencil, push down into the rubber and I mean, this is, you can see a very dirty old one and that way you get a hole like that. And if it's not quite big enough, we're going to be putting these split pins through it. So if it's not quite big enough, you can push your pencil and go around like that. And that might be a bit easier to not hurt your hands. So from on top of the rubber, make your mark push down and you get a little hole and then you can make it a bit bigger so that's two techniques this one is a lot easier though I will say okay so now we've got all the holes in we're going to um, attach them together so we're going to be using split pins I'm going to do one end with a split pin and I'm going to show you what you can do if you don't have any of these um, by using just a piece of paper so it's just scrap line paper but um the back of an envelope, you know, uh, printer paper, just a thin kind of uh, any paper will do. So for the split pin, um, you want to put them through like this. So if you oh, if you tap them, they should all the holes should line up so you can see that. So I'll put them through like that. Um, and you want the opening to be on this brown side. So the side that we do this with, you want to be on the brown side and not the shiny side. And that's just when we open this up, um, this bit here um, will be against your ear and the coloured side will actually be the bit against your ear. And that's just a little softer. So this has got some bits that might catch on your hair and things. Um, so it's easier to have it um, on the outside and then it'll get covered up. So. That's one side done, and then we're going to do the other one. So if you've got two split pins, what you'll do is you just do exactly the same thing and put this one through here. But if you haven't, what you can do is you get a piece of paper, um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to roll it up. And you want to do this quite tightly. Okay. Like this. Now you don't want it to be too big because what you're going to be doing is threading this through the hole. So this is this method using this is much easier if you've used the hole punch because the holes are a little bit bigger than when you use your pencil. Um, you can use a piece of tape just to close one end like that and then just check that it'll fit through. You can see that with this end, they twist around the split pin. And on this end, they'll twist the same way around the piece of paper. Um, so 
Once you've got this, so this doesn't fall out, you want to squish one side really flat like that. Now you can use a little piece of PVA glue under here or double-sided tape, or just a piece of sellotape, but you want to make sure that it's quite firm so this bit's a bit long. Um, you want to go on top like that and then just make sure it's stuck down. So really get your nail in, make sure it's nice and stuck down like that. And then you want to do the same thing on this side. Um, but now that we've done that, you can fold it. So you want the this colour to be on the outside, I think, unless you've got some really nice colours on the inside that you want to incorporate into your helmet. Um, so you've got it like this, and it's a bit fiddly at first, but you want to kind of open it up. So can you see at the end there, you're opening them up like this and twisting them around. You can see how this split pin might get a bit loose. Now, this is actually why the paper versions um, are often stronger. <laughs> um, but if your split pin starts getting loose like that, because it's going through so many layers, again, just a piece of tape. And you can tape it on like that and it'll still allow the others to move um, so you want to take two of these and they're going to be the pieces that go around your chin your face is going to come out of here so the kind of shape you're looking for for the head piece is so you can see if I put it straight like that that's like a straight line and you want it to be straight here and then at an angle here so you've got a quarter shape and an eighth okay so I would tell you the distance between these gaps but it really does depend on the size of your head um <laughs> so I can't um I could tell you what they are on mine but that's probably not going to be the same on yours so once we've got like that that like that it's going to keep moving around so to stop that moving around we're going to get that last one um, which I asked you to put aside at the beginning and what we're going to do is we're going to start on one of these so you've got the glue on here and we're going to pop it over and connect it and use a peg and that'll allow it to dry um, for the next ones it's a bit easier to use tape so you just want to get some lengths of tape um, and you want to leave a gap however big um, you think they need to be in order to get that shape around your head. Um, so it's normally a few centimetres on me. It might be a little bit smaller if you've got a smaller head. So if you put a piece of tape over like this and you want it to be on both sides, just put your nail down. And you can do this by eye, it doesn't have to be measured. So leave about the same amount of gap. Add another piece of tape. And then we keep going with the remaining three. So there's six across this section. So when you get to this end one, do the same thing and you can fold it under and do the glue. And that just makes it a bit stronger because you've got the glue on either end. Um, but you can also just tape it. Um, it just might not last as long when you're um, taking it on and off your head. Okay, so next we're going to be making the circles to make um, these end kind of pieces which go over your ears um, and that you can add detail to. So for each one, we're going to need two circles of cardboard, one slightly smaller than the other. One of the ways of doing this is the, the size of um, the inside of a sellotape roll is actually quite a good size. So you can do this, but we're going to need a circle that's a little bit smaller as well. So for that, I'm going to show you how to make um, a compass from a piece of cardboard like this. So you need a strip of cardboard like that and you want the lines on the cardboard. Can you see the lines going this way? Down it. So this is going, you've got your wiggles at the side and the lines are going this way, the corrugation. And on this way, the wiggles are on the, sh the short side. So you want it to be like this. You need to put two holes so you start with one hole 
and you want to put a second hole. Now, the second hole needs to be half of the width of the circle that you want. So say you want your circle to be about eight centimeters, which would work um, for what we're doing. You want to start at zero where this one is and you want to put another hole so you can just put it gently with a pencil like that. And you want to just push it through so the lead comes through. So that's your first one. You want to put the middle one down like that, the middle one, one of them down like that. And then you put your pencil through the other one and you just hold this hand still. And this one goes all the way around. And if it catches on anything like that, just flick it over. And you can see you've got a perfect circle. Now, what you can do here is because we want a slightly smaller circle as well as the big one, we can put another hole just a little bit further down like that, like this. And then we put it here and go around. And you've got your small circle that's going to go on the big one. Um, so you want to cut two of these out. It's quite good to cut out of some thicker cardboard for the big circle, um, but it is a little bit harder to get through with scissors. Um, so um, if you want it to be stronger, you can double these ones up. So I'll get these cut out and then I'll show you what I mean by making them stronger. I've got everything cut out there. Um, you can see I cut out one from this thicker cardboard and then one from this thinner cardboard. Um, you can see if I wobble that, it's quite strong. And if I wobble this one, it bends along these lines of corrugation. So when you're making things from cardboard, so this is useful, um, not just for this make, um, but for anything. If you want to make a piece stronger like this, one of the easiest ways of doing it, so this is quite a simple shape with a circle, but this could be a very complicated shape that you've cut out. Um, and if it just keeps getting weak like this, you can put it down on a piece of cardboard, draw around it, so you can see I've drawn another one. And we're going to cut this one out too. And so you can see how the lines of the corrugation on the cardboard, see those wiggles, they're going this way. And that's the same on this one. Now you can see the lines going this way. So I'm going to do some pencil lines so that you can see what I mean. So on this one, lines going that way, lines going that way. Now if you cross hatch these, so if you line them up and they're both going the same way, then what will happen was the piece will still bend. But if you put one shape where the lines go in this way and the one underneath the ones are going this way and you glue those together, can you see I'm putting the same amount of pressure there, I promise, um, and it's not bending, so it makes them a bit stronger. So it basically means that when you're putting them on here, on your helmet, if you only have one, then you might end up with kind of a piece that bends like this, whereas if you glue two together and allow them to dry, when it goes on, you'll get a lot stronger shape um, to attach your extra pieces to. So that's just a useful thing to know when working with cardboard for whatever reason. So these circles are going to go on like this. Now you can attach them in a few different ways. Um, so to begin with, what I would do is I'd put a piece of bit of glue on here That. Now this won't hold them on completely, but it will make them a bit stronger. So you want that to be in the middle. If you look where the little dot was, where you did your compass, you want that to be about in the middle. And what you can do is you can get a peg on. If you can manage to get a peg on, we'll just hold it a little bit. But what we're going to do is we're going to be using um, what I call tabs. And that's a piece of cardboard that we use to attach one thing to another with a little bit more strength. So to make a tab, you're going to be using a piece of card like this. Now you can use corrugated card or you could use um, some of the extra pieces of cereal box. But what we'll be doing is we'll be cutting a piece and you'll be making a shape like this. And this goes over. So you can see it goes around the corner like that and we're going to be attaching one to here and one to this side so again 
You can do this with glue, you could do it with double-sided tape, or you could just do it with tape, normal tape. So, show you each of the techniques. So we'll do this one with a piece of normal tape, so you can see that goes around like that. You want it to connect to this side, around like that, and on to here. And then don't attach it to your chin straps because you want those to keep moving. And then one to here. So get a second one. If you need to bend it a bit like that so that it goes around like this. So maybe we do this one with glue. Oh, that's a lot, a much too much. Quite often people use a lot of glue and you don't actually need as much as you think you do. So this is probably a little bit too much, if I'm honest. Right. So the thing with using glue is you have to wait for it to dry. So you want this bit and this bit to be connected. And because they're not at the same level, they do need a bit of time to dry. So this is where pegs definitely <laughs> come in handy because if you're actually having to hold it, you're gonna have to hold it and push down until it's dry enough to leave. So you can see it's already holding a little bit, but if I put a peg on there, I can move that one round. You see I've got one on both ends, like that. Don't worry if there's a small gap there, that's okay, because we're attaching something flat to something that's curved. So there's always gonna be a little bit of a gap. So we've got one with tape and one with glue. And once this is all dry, you can actually run a piece of tape over it to make it kind of doubly strong. So now we've done it on this side, we're gonna flip over. And we're gonna do the same thing with this one here. I quite make it like making these tabs with this cardboard over this. That's just because cereal box, this kind of shiny surface, things don't stick to it as well as the papery surface of cardboard. Um, so it's just more likely that your um, whatever you're making will be a bit stronger if you're using glue attached to this. So we're doing the same thing here and here. Whenever you're using tape, if you use your nail and really push the tape into all of the little gaps, it really makes a difference to how much it works um, or how strong it the connection holds. So now we've got the two ends on like this. That's the main structure, really, of your helmet um, all done. Um, so the reason why I leave this bit loose is it's quite nice to be able to get your head in and actually be able to move it. You can push it up to get your head inside and then pull it back down over your chin. Um, now you've got your um, circles on and the helmet is drying. Um, we're going to be working at um, adding detail which will make your helmet uh, individual and so you could maybe come up with a feature that you think your um, would be good for your helmet to have if you remember the video at the beginning mine had uh, an aerial on it so I'm going to show you how to do that um, but you can also add um, details to these so these so these are going to be glued onto here like the moon and the earth were on the one I just showed you um, but it's easier to put that decoration on. So one of the things you could do is create a mission badge for Artemis. Um, if you have a look online, all of the NASA missions that there have ever been all have their own logo design for the mission. Um, so you can find colours on um, bits of old packaging, stuff that comes through the post, old little bits of paper, and you could do a collage or you could draw with your pencils um, on a piece of paper. So I've got a little rocket landing on the moon there. That could be my logo for my mission. So there's all sorts of stuff you can do um, to design that. And also if you look around for bits of other bits of recycling. So I found these, um, which some sewing pins um, arrived in and I kept the middle. That's quite a nice shape. So you could maybe attach that on there and it looks a little bit like um, a speaker. 
maybe it's some kind of um, radio um, or a dial that you could turn around. Uh, maybe you've got things like pipe cleaners at home or um, barbecue skewers. Um, that's how I'm going to show you to make the aerial. You could use these kind of paper straws. Quite often schools have those, so maybe you could ask. Um, I'm going to show you something with a loo roll tube. Um, so any kind of interesting shapes that you could maybe add a feature to your helmet and think about the feature. So what kind of things do you think you would need on your astronaut's helmet if you were to go up to the surface of the moon? Right, so I'm going to make an aerial. For an aerial, you're going to need either kind of a wooden barbecue skewer or um, a paper straw, kind of a art supplies paper straw and some corrugated cardboard like this with the wiggles on. So you can see the lines are going across it like this. So to make the twirly piece that will go around your aerial, you need to cut a diagonal. So this is paying attention to where the lines are. So you've got the lines of the cardboard going this way and we want a piece that goes diagonally across like that. So it doesn't matter exactly the angle. I'm going to cut this. You want it maybe about a centimetre and a half across. You can make it wider if you'd like though, but don't make it too thin or it'll tear. With a barbie skewer, just start at one end. So you're pushing it through. Mine's got a bit of paint on. Push it through like this and then we turn it over. And you can see those holes. Just thread it through another one. And you can just kind of move them up like this and you can make a little hoop or you can leave it much bigger you see how you get that quite nice little kind of spiral shape it's a little bit more interesting a bit more of a fun shape to play with so get that on and you can kind of move it along your barbecue skewer Twist it around a bit, kind of get the shape you want like that. And if you move it up to the top, you've got this bit down at the end. And it really is as simple as, so this is probably dry now, I'll take those off. You can see at the top here, you've got holes and even a bit without holes, you're just gonna be using that to push down in like that. And then you've got yourself an aerial. Now, if you want this to be a different color, you could always paint the cardboard before you cut it out. Um, so that's one way and you can use a paper straw in much the same way so you might have to squish it so you're creating a bit of a shape like that um, and it might be a little bit fiddlier like this you're doing the same thing so you can see those lines So again, a little bit fiddlier, but you keep doing the same thing. Go all the way down. And for this one, because it won't push down into that hole because it's not as strong, um, what you'd want to do is once you've got all of this on here, is just squish it flat like that. Okay. And we can use a piece of tape. And if you stick that on first like that, you can then maybe stick your logo on top. So that is your aerial. For this, we're going to need a loo roll. Um, sorry, toilet roll, middle. Wash it down flat like this. And you want to make it a bit shorter. Like that. And then cut up like that. So what we're doing is we're making a slightly thinner... Um, slightly thinner circle because the toilet roll tube is a little bit big um, for, for for what we need it to be on here. So we're going to turn it around like that. You can see how it's got overlay so you can actually cut off this extra bit. Still overlaps a little bit and then we're going to be using tape to keep that in that shape. Okay so now that you've gotten this like this you want to be making 
some cuts up around. Now this is going to be, these are going to be creating tabs. So a little bit like these, where we were creating a piece that attaches two surfaces together. We're doing the same thing, but in a different way. So once you've got cuts around like that, easy. They don't have to be evenly spaced. We're going to be folding them. So you want the distance down to be about the same. But don't worry too much. If you think one like that is a bit big, just go back in and put another little clip. So I'm going to do that on here as well. Now the reason we've made all of these is now that this gives a big surface area to stick onto here. So you can go around and put different pieces of tape or we can do glue and pegs. Once you've got um, this shape here, we can make something that rotates around it. So the idea of this is that you can be making a dial. So maybe you've got music to listen to while you're walking around on the moon, on the moon <laughs> and you want to be able to turn the um, volume up and down or maybe it turns the um, the speakers in your helmet between music and being able to talk to the other astronauts that are walking around or maybe it's so that you can phone home and speak to your best friend on earth so there's all sorts of stuff that you could do with a switch on your helmet um, so to make a moving element you can use the other half of your toilet roll tube and this is so that you can size it so it's a bit easier to do once it's dry <laughs> but can you see on there? You're wanting it to be tight enough that it stays on but so that it can turn around. Now, this is actually much bigger than we need it. So we can make it thinner like this. Now, you could also make it from a different piece of cardboard. So we could cut a strip from the cereal box like this wrap that around and then you've kind of got a green dial so put a piece of tape like that on one side hold it on like that and you want to pull it quite tight and you want to make sure that this tape doesn't stick onto the actual um, loo roll tube <laughs> because if it sticks on then it's not going to turn around but you can see how that turns around like this Ooh. don't want to turn it too strongly because the glue's not quite dry but you could use a pen to put some details on so maybe you need some lines that match up so that you know what setting you've got it turned on to. So I would draw on here a little music note. So I know that that's for the music and then maybe I could draw a little telephone. So I know that's when I'm getting a telephone call. Um, and then we, we could think of something for the third switch. What could the third switch be? Um, maybe the third switch is to speak into aliens because we don't know. There might be a, a connection to aliens up there on the moon. We don't know. We've not been for a while. <laughs> so that's how you make a switch with a turn. Okay, so I have one final thing that you could add on, and that's some kind of cabling or hosing. So your helmet might end up having a wiring which connects the various features. Um, or maybe you need a cable which attaches from your astronaut's helmet onto your suit. Um, we're not making a whole suit today, but maybe you want to think about that. So we've got circle. Um, I mentioned earlier, maybe you've got things like pipe cleaners. So, if, for example, you've got pipe cleaners, you could push some little holes through. And 
like this to kind of create a wiring loop. You could stick on a lid for a button um, or draw on a few different buttons like this um, and write the labelings for what they all do. But if you'd like to make some hose and you don't have something like pipe cleaners, you can actually make something out of paper quite easily. So this is just thin parcel paper. I'm going to wrap it into, well, cut off that ripped bit. But I'm going to wrap it into a roll. In order to tape it, if it's easier, you can squish it flat. Go like this. Go like this. And you can see, now you can see you can make this bend as though it's kind of hosing. So if you look like this, and you can use strips of cardboard to make it a bit stronger. I've actually got a little bit of uh, painted pink cardboard, which I think might be quite nice to add some color. So for this, you want to cut some strips. You can see the corrugation like that so that it bends. glue so you can see I've not covered the whole surface it just kind of needs to be enough that it sticks at certain points so you can go around like this and then just use a little bit of tape to hold the end like that You could maybe add a few of these. Um, you could add one at the other end. Or you can add a lot of them for stripes. I'm just going to add two so I can manage to show you it on this video. My idea for this kind of hosing is that I thought that it might fit onto your astronaut suit because you obviously need your. Um, your helmet and your suit to be connected or maybe this is the connection that goes between your helmet and your oxygen tanks that you'll need to carry around so we'll be making tabs like this so exactly the same you want one side on here and one side will attach onto here i'm going to do that with glue and tape Um, and you're wanting to stick that onto there. The hose could go around and you could attach it to the back of your helmet. Can I create this extra silly feature? Or if you decide that you're going to make yourself a suit or a jetpack or something, then you can make this longer and have it so that it connects all the way down onto your suit. It's quite hard to show you in, with this um, camera angle. Um, so that you can see me working and also on the desk you can see what I mean. Maybe it could connect around from your ear around to here. So perhaps you could decide it's like a microphone of some sort for you to speak or maybe it's a water drinking tube that goes up into your helmet so that you can have a drink when you're out running around. Um, so hopefully I've shown you a few different techniques and you can use them to create different features and you can have a proper think about what those features uh, would be and how useful they'd be up in space.